So, like Matt and I were sitting here, and when everybody's running into the uh, into the mud, we're like, "That was disgusting," and he was like, "Yes, it was. It was very disgusting." And we just mixed that mud up time and time and time again, running after those tires. It was uh, it was intense. It was serious. Um, so before we let the students come up, just to brag on these uh, all that stuff you saw, our girls cleaned house. Like I don't think that they did. You guys lose? Did y'all ever lose? Uh, so they went undefeated. Um, the boys, we did all right. We did okay. <laughs> Uh, we, you know, we were rookies, remember? Like, it, it was a rookie year. So, uh, so we, but the girls did great, cleaned house, boys, we won the high five football, and that was what we cared about, right? Like, uh, we said, we said, tall guys at the back, we're going to win this game. We're going to get this. And uh, so anyway, everybody did great. Um, junior high students did great. Um, it was a lot of fun when it came to the games. The, uh, the worship, all that was really awesome. Not as much footage because, you know, we're all, actually worshiping and and so we're not filming so great services awesome speakers great times so let's let the students talk junior high students go ahead and come on up here and uh, Matt's going to help you with the mics come on up come on up give it up for these junior high students listen if you can tell God moved because I got junior high kids to talk. I got junior high kids to come up to the front and talk. So something good happened. Sit down here, TC. I'll lean up here in the back. TC, start it off here. So unlike these, um, these ladies over here, I was part of the junior high group. We won one game. <laughs> we lost. I wasn't going to tell them that, TC. <laughs> We're in church, Tanner. <laughs> it's not a lie. It's just secrets. All right, go ahead. But the, honestly, the feeling was I didn't want to go. I, I went to Youth America one year, and I was like, I'm expecting that. We went to Sparks. I wasn't, I was expecting a bunch, just nothing. I was just not ready. I didn't want to go. I went, and it was totally a surreal feeling because I had a really tough couple weeks, and then that just got me through. And then Jesus really spoke to me, and worship was just amazing. It was just God could touch you, and God was in the building at all times. And it was just a surreal moment for, I'm pretty sure, all, in our entire youth group. That's just how I felt. And then, of course, there was the mud. I think, I think none of us liked it. I mean, some of us, but that was my experience. Before camp, do I say my name? Yeah. Okay. Um, my name's Layla, and <laughs> before camp, I had really, you know, gone through a lot, and definitely, like, while I was at it, it just really, like, from the service and the worship, it just helped me to just let it all go, and so I just really liked that. And then, also ran a mile and a half, and that was fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So my name's Kaylin, and b well, before we like left for camp, I was like, well, should I go to this? But then I came to it, and I wanted to go, and I actually had a great time, but the main thing that really helped me was the words that the preacher was preaching, because like he really grabbed you and spoke to you. And it was just awesome, and it really helped me with my connection with God. So, um, my name's Ava, and I we usually go to um, Youth America, and I always heard about how great it was, and so I was really looking forward to that, but we didn't go, and so um, I didn't, really didn't want to go to Sparks Camp. Because I didn't think it'd be that great, but it was honestly the best camp that I've ever gone to, and my favorite game was probably the fun run. It was very fun and <laughs> dirty. <laughs> the pickles. Um, the preacher was also amazing. Um, one of the best I've ever heard, and one of the things that he talked about is that Jonah in the boat, and how he talked about Jesus wanted him, and he wanted him off the boat so he could, 
have take care of him. And um, the other people on the boat, if he didn't go to him, they were all they would also um, suffer, I guess. And so it really talked about how you can't help your friends like all the way, and you just gotta give them to God, and it's not all on you. And anyway, I think that's it. Hi, my name is Jillian Evans. I was the one that like got shot up 15 feet in the air by <laughs> Matt. It was my decision. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Um, my favorite part about camp was the preacher. And I know all of them have said it. And I highly recommend you to go and search this guy. His name is Manny Arango, and he just came and spoke to all of us. Why am I getting emotional? I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I'm also nervous. I just like found out like two minutes ago that I was doing this. Um, but the thing that he really talked about me was, well, Kaylee was also my counselor, and she had devotional time with us, and she talked about an eternal mindset, and we have to focus on that and not the worldly things, and that really got to me, and that's my goal that I'm working on. Thank you. Um, so my name is Kylie, and there was a lot. Like, we were, we, I was with high school even though I'm junior high, but I, yeah, it just happened. And so um, we talked in our bunks. Like, we stayed up late talking and just processing, like, everything that happened that day. And even when we got back from camp, even though we spent hours, like, processing and thinking about what happened that day, even when we got back from camp, we were still, like, I'm still processing. I don't know what, like, a lot of things happened. It was the shortest camp I've ever been to, and so much happened. Like, we were talking, he said one thing, and it would hit people with a million different ways, like it meant different things. And so like Ava said, one thing that really like spoke to me was whatever you um, feed will survive and whatever you starve will die. So it kind of like, yeah, it said something to me. So oh, I got one. Okay. <laughs> Well, my name's Aubrey, and I was really nervous to tell y'all that I didn't want to go to camp, but I guess everyone already said that, so I guess I can say that. So I wasn't really wanting to go to camp, because I already went to two, and I just wasn't really, like, wanting to go. Like, I just wasn't with it. But I went, and it turned out to be really good. I learned about grudges, and you sometimes have some that you don't even know. Like, you have some growing for a really long time and you don't even know about it. And, yeah. This, yes, you can say something else. Okay. You get a I also wanted to say how close, like I've been close with pretty much everybody up here, but how close I got to like people even more closer than I already was, if that makes sense, and how much I've started hanging out with people. Like, we're going to hang out after this is over and like, we're just so much closer in two days. Groovy. Amen. You guys can be seated. Let's give them one more round. It takes a lot of guts as seventh graders. You high schoolers, you next group. You guys want high to come school on boys, up? yeah. High Let's school go. boys, come on up. And as they come up, I just want to tell how proud I am of that junior high group. And I want to commend you as a church because every one of them said this, and I love this about our junior high kids, that we paid attention to the word. We didn't go there and just pull tires off a deal and do all this other stuff. Yeah, that was fun. But whenever it came down to it, I listened to the speaker, and that says something for our church, amen, the importance that we put on the word, and that's, that's groovy to me, amen. All right, here you go, Reese. <laughs> I think I was the only one that was prepared for camp, wanting to go to camp. That's what, that's what it sounded like, because I was like, yeah, camp, let's go. And everybody else was like, oh, I don't know, this is different. I'm like, I was like, I want something different. I was like, I, like, I want to get out of the house, get away from my family for a little bit. <laughs> And anyways, we got there, and it was crazy, it was fun, but I have to agree with everybody else that's been saying it. The pastor was 
he was amazing. He, he really spoke out to, especially the younger generations, and he just, he, he pretty much called me out pretty much every service, I'm just saying. <laughs> I think, but he did it to everybody, it was everybody. He, he didn't leave anybody out, and it was just a really great time. Uh, God just put a lot on, on me that, those few days, just really speaking down to me, get, try and get some priorities straight, and just uh, try and get closer with God. Thank you. Uh, my name's Heather Rice, and uh, so I'm pretty much like everyone else. I really didn't want to go to camp, and so Tanner was like talking me into it like crazy. And, like, the last night, the turn-in dues, like, I called my parents, and I was like, hey, bring me $50. I want to go to camp. And so... Thank you, Hadley's parents. Thank you. (laughs) And so uh, they brought me $50, and uh, I ended up going to camp, and the preacher, uh, Manny Arango, he was one of the best preachers I've ever heard, and, yeah, that's... Pretty much what I got. Hi, my name is Ronnie Zavala. Um, I'm about to agree with Reese over here. I was like really wanting to go to camp. Like I was very excited to go. Even before that, I just recently moved here like six months ago. So like I haven't been to a church camp in like five years. So I was really ready to go and worship. And I just knew that it was going to be good because going to church camp, you just know everyone's on the same page. You know, everyone's there to worship God. You're not going to be afraid to lift your hands, go up to altar calls. Everyone's there for the same reason. And uh, this, this camp was really uh, a turning point for me. Um, I'll get into that in a minute, too. But the, I remember the first night I was telling myself that I was debating if I was going to go to an altar call. I knew they were going to have one, and uh, I was debating if I should do it or not. And I told myself if what he said applied to exactly what I needed here, I would go up, and I did it. And uh, pretty much that's what happened. He said exactly what he did, and I walked up, did the altar call. And from that point, I just knew camp was just going to be life-changing. It, it was insane. That worship that night was, it was crazy. Um, and then the next night uh, is when Manny actually started preaching. And everything he said was just dead on. Like, becoming into camp, it was, there was a whole bunch going on. And everything he said was literally everything I needed to hear. So it just changed everything. And then third night, oh, gosh. A lot of people see me uh, cry. That wasn't me, I promise. Uh, that was someone else. But yeah, it was, it was hard touching. Um, and I had my little brother there too, and uh, that was pretty cool seeing my little brother, you know, shed some tears, change his life around too. And that, uh, a lot of times you get to see that. Uh, and the game was cool too. We won high five football. It was easy. It was the one thing we did that was easy. Yeah. on this. Uh, I was excited to go to camp. Uh, For me, worship was probably the best part. Uh, I felt like it really kind of just, it felt different from every other camp like Youth America that I went to. Uh, It was hype there, Youth America, but I don't know, I just got a whole different vibe from Spark, and I think I went up there almost every altar call. Uh, I went up there along with Ronnie one time, watched him shave his beard. Uh, I was praying for him, though. Uh, other than all that, I mean, camp was great. It was high five football, you know. We won the one game. Uh, <laughs> I was carrying the team most of the time. But, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh we did win Bible battle. Like, once. This, this yeah. Once. yeah, we we won one time in Bible battle. And we also, you know. we also won a, a race too. Oh yeah, we did. Oh, well, no, we got Mitchie. We said we did. Uh, well, we, we kind of want to race if you don't take away, like, the cheating part. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion. It's not our fault. Well, it's confusion. It not cheating. We didn't cheat. We yeah, didn't we, cheat. you won the race. <laughs> but uh, that's about all I got. Thank you. Hey, so these high school guys, these four guys specifically, did a great job leading the young men. They, they, they stepped up. They... They led the young men. The young men followed after them. There was junior high mixed in with both groups. 
Um, these guys did a great job. Uh, great, all four of them did awesome with just the spirit of camp, being excited for our teams, like our face paint. Um, you see all, like Reese just rips that tire from the guy. Like these guys gave full effort uh, in everything that they did. And, and like they all said, they all had great times at the altar. Um, night two was something for all of us, night, uh, night two. That first night Manny spoke, we all got something. And so these guys did a great job. Matt, do you have anything to add for high school boys? I think Reese got something to say. Reese, One preach, thing, man. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Always got something to say. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this was the first camp, I mean, of course, before COVID. And it felt so normal. The normalcy was back. And they didn't care. I went to another camp before, and they still had some restrictions. Not as, not as much, but, I mean, first night, what was COVID? We were all... We were all one, and it was amazing. And I really hope we go back. So I got, yeah, these guys did a great job. So I got to bunk with these guys and uh, Chandler, right? Woo, love it. And Joe was in there. Who is it? I miss anybody? And uh, it's so cool. I love telling the story about Chandler because his grandfather's the one that picked me up on the church bus 20 or 30 years ago. And here I am 30 years later, dude, sitting in the same room with him, having to um, disciple these boys and, and lead them closer to Jesus Christ. And uh, the circle continues, amen. So that's a groovy story. But I'm proud of these guys. Man, they really did a great job of leading and not leaving anybody out, um, taking these junior high guys and making sure even during discussion, giving them time to, uh, to speak. And uh, I challenged them. I said, guys, I said, uh, your, your job is to respond to the altar call. Um, every one of us in here knows something that we need to change. So we don't need to ask God, God, what do we need to change? Every one of us. And then that goes in the church house. We pretty much all know. But I've got to have an experience, an encounter with this living God. Amen. And, and they did. And I'm just so proud of them. And I love the boys because it's like we won football. Like, <laughs> it's the one game that matters. Yeah. I raised my hands. I only cried fans. once, but we won football. Did I mention football? We only cheated once. Did I mention football? I love it. I love it. I love these guys. Let's give them a round of applause. All, All right. right. Love you guys. Okay, so the high school girls go last among the students because they're going to clean shop when it comes to what they, they say. They, uh, they're like, oh, oh. But they are, they, this gr group of girls, um, I'll brag on them at the end, they are a great group of girls. Um, God moved in all of their lives, so they just uh, give them a hand as they come on up. We are excited to hear from them. Hi, everyone. I'm Mystic, and... I had went to Youth America for two years, and it really, it helped me out a lot with getting closer to God, and so when I figured out we were going to a new church camp, it honestly scared me, and I was very stressed out that it wasn't going to be as good as Youth America, but it definitely lived up to it, and it was even better. So I wrote some stuff down. Um, camp started out stressful, as I said. I really didn't know what to expect, which stressed me out even more. The first day was stressful because we showed up late, but then we went to service that first night and everything got better after that. The games were very fun and kept us super busy throughout the day. The games got us all out of our comfort zones, especially with all the mud everywhere. Every game that was not supposed to be muddy, it was muddy. <laughs> the speaker on the second and third night completely changed how I thought about everything. The speaker's name was Manny and everything he said was so personal to everyone in the room, and it hit everyone differently. Lastly, one of my favorite parts of camp was our small groups. They were so personal, and everyone in the room opened up to everyone. It brought all the girls closer, and it made the camp experience so good. I still think about all the things Manny talked about, and it still impacts me to this day. Um, so my name is Jocelyn. I Went to Youth America for what, six years? A lot. I went like, to like all the all years. All the years we went. Yeah, yeah, I went like all the years. I was all Youth the America years. vet. I was a pro. And so going into this new camp, I was definitely excited because I hadn't been to camp in a long time. But with the setback of us getting there late, and I didn't come, I came excited, but honestly, I didn't come with the right attitude. I came a little bit frustrated, kind of walls up because I was annoyed <laughs> you know how you are like you get angry and you're like I don't even want to be here anymore and that was me I was mad um, but after the first night um, one of the local 
preachers spoke, he did a, a really great job. His name was Heath Corrales. And he spoke on um, just like God, he said, he spoke on the turn it around God. So that was really good. We had a lot of people respond to altar call, but the second night, Monday night, we were all tired. The first day is like jam packed of games, but the first night Manny spoke on Monday night, you've heard, it was fantastic. It was great. He spoke on, um, it was all a dream was the name of his sermon. And he spoke on Joseph and how it took 22 years for his dream that God had given him to come into reality. And honestly, that takes patience, that takes faith, that takes trust in God. And that would be really difficult, I think, for some of us at our age. But he said that Joseph went through some tests. And some of the tests that he went through were the test of power, so what you do with um, what you do when you have no consequences uh, for your actions. And then he spoke on the test of prison, which was really good. I think a lot of us kind of let go of some walls and grudges that we had. And then uh, the test of your past. So don't let your flesh kill the dream that God has for you. And it might seem like, yeah, that's a lot of tests. Well, God doesn't test what he doesn't trust. You can't move up to the next level until you've passed the test. And so if you're being tested, congratulations, because you're moving up. So I really, I've loved Manny. He was a great speaker. And if you haven't had the chance, he's from North Carolina. He's fantastic. Hi, I'm Gina. Um, I was so excited for camp. Uh, this was my first ever church camp that I went to. And so even though none of us had been to this one, I hadn't been to this one, I'd heard so many great things from it. And some of the things that I wanted to talk about was the first night, um, I was just like Ronnie, I did not want to go up to altar. I think that's so embarrassing. Um, but then God had really laid something on my heart that night, and he told me that we don't go, hold on, let me figure it out. The one prop for these girls is look at all of them having like prepared things to speak. So give it up for the girls having something to speak because they, like, uh, they took notes, they remember. It's awesome. Um, God had laid something on my heart, and it was that church isn't a place for perfect people to come to. We come here because we are broken and spir spiritually sick. I don't come here to feel good. I come here to feel God. And I think that's something that stuck with me throughout the entire camp and that I was going to be intentional, and I wasn't just going to use this to go have fun. Yes, I wanted to have fun with my friends, but I wanted to have an encounter with God, and I did multiple times. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about was I love coming and... Uh, coming here on Sunday mornings and listening to Pastor Mike and uh, Matt speak and um, seeing people worship and lift their hands for Jesus is something that has just motivated me to come to church even more and to seek God more daily. And I want to tell you, um, if you are lacking motivation for seeking God, come to a youth camp and watch kids worship because it was bringing tears to my eyes. I was because everybody that's there doesn't look around, doesn't judge you, doesn't care, even though we're all the same age. It's just we're all there for the same reason, to be on fire for God and to learn about God. And I think that's something um, that I just really liked. Now looking back, um, I left camp with a language to speak in for, uh, to God. And a few girls in my youth group, including myself, are doing a Bible study, a month-long Bible study. And it's really helped me... Um, keep everybody accountable, and um, use discipline in our life. So that was my favorite things about camp. Hey, guys. I'm JC. Um, I know Tanner just thanked us for having everything prepared, but don't let him fool you because I literally was writing all this down in the car. I knew what I wanted to say, but I was literally on the way here writing it down, and that kind of was the same for camp because I like I wanted to go and I was so excited and then it got to the time and I was like do I really have to and like 
I didn't know where it was coming from, but I ended up packing very, very last minute too. <laughs> so a lot of things are last minute with that. But <laughs> the first thing that I wanted to say was first, um, Manny was amazing, like you've already heard. But um, before camp, like I'm, I was like very involved in the youth group and everything. Like I. I was never like a bad kid, but I just wasn't exactly where I wanted to be with my relationship with God. And I feel like I had this ideal like picture of how I wanted my relationship with Christ to be and my walk with God to be, but I hadn't really put it into motion. And the only st thing stopping me was me. And the second night of camp, like listening to Manny speak and everything really like brought that to light. So like, Whenever I got back, I was just like ready, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna change this, 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 like get it together, like all that. But um, then also one thing that I really loved was our small groups, um, getting to know everybody and like us discussing everything together was really great because you like realize how much you relate to some of the other girls and also like how you just realize you're not alone and like everybody has their own struggles and everybody is going through their own things. Like there's so much like going on that you don't know about, you never know. But um, besides that, the like main fun things that I really liked was um, all the games, the high school girls were undefeated, yeah. as you guys have heard. <laughs> And um, basically, my favorite was the race. It was like we had to run a mile and a half. I mean, it hurt, but it was fun. Um, and it probably would have been a little bit better for me if I didn't chug a half jar of pickle juice because that was part of it. Basically, there's obstacles and how to do that. But yeah, I, it was really great. And the whole experience like really like changed me. And I feel like a lot of the people that went feel the same. It was really good, but yeah. My name is Kinley, and um, as you've heard from everyone else, church camp this year was incredible. Um, I was actually really excited. I've always been excited to go to church camp. I was really excited to go this year. We were going to a new camp, and um, the first day, like everyone else has mentioned, we arrived an hour and a half late. We missed the entire orientation, so I was very stressed out, and most of us girls were. We were not very happy. <laughs> So it was started out kind of rough, but after that first service, I think we all kind of just knew, like, everything was going to be okay. Once we got there, you could feel God's presence in the camp from beginning to the end. And also, as you've heard, our guest speaker was amazing. Um, my favorite part about camp also was our small groups and our cabin. It gave us an opportunity to connect with each other on a deeper level while we were growing our relationships with Christ. And we all kind of got to, most of us have grown up with each other, but it gave us an opportunity to learn more about each other than we had, like, known. And the highlight of camp for me was the land run. It was a mile and a half run with obstacles that we each had to complete. And we were all kind of pushed out of our comfort zone when they told us we all were going to have to do this but it was really fun, and I can't wait to go back. <laughs> yeah, great job, so my name's Emily, and this was my last year to go as a camper to youth camp, and so I was kind of sad, because like Jocelyn, we'd gone to Youth America every year. We were pros, and so yeah. I was like, well, I don't know what to expect. We've never been here before, and it's our last year, but looking back, I can see that God was present from the time we left the church to the time we got back. We had many obstacles getting there. It took us a very long time, but we made it. And coming back, we were able to bring the fire that we had for God into our youth group. And I mean, it was just incredible to watch people who didn't even get to go to camp just be on fire for God because of the atmosphere that we had set for them. And I had a few things. During one of the worship services, the leaders paused and said that God doesn't give you a desire in your heart that he doesn't equip you for. And that really spoke to me because of going off to college and I've been kind of nervous and iffy but God told me that he's not going to give you something that you can't handle and so that meant a lot and 
Let me preface by saying that I am not a runner at all. <laughs> and so when they told me they needed a runner for the fun race, I was nervous. <laughs> but I wasn't going to tell them no. So I got in line and I felt pressure because I did not want to be the reason we lost our winning streak. So about halfway through, I heard, run faster. We're not done. We aren't losing this. What felt like I was being yelled at was my team building me up in a moment of discouragement. <laughs> we finally saw the finish line, and we won the race. We were officially undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. And like all the other girls said, at nighttime, we would all get on the top of our bunks, and we would share what we learned about that day, and it drew us all closer, and we all, I feel like I'm much closer to these girls than I was before we left, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Amen. These girls did a great job, like they, like they continue to say they were undefeated. We'll just keep saying that. That, that. If you remember anything, remember undefeated. Girls, undefeated. No girls, undefeated. Okay. They did a great job. They, they really did a great job as a group, just the same as the boys did, these high school girls. There's, there's a few of them missing that are here tonight. That They just led the junior high girls. We, uh, we had no issues because of how well that these older students did. Um, great job. All of them going to the altar. Like, I can't express to you enough how, how many of these students had breakthroughs those nights. Like the tears coming down their faces, the, the times at the altar, um, just great great things happen in their life um, those those camp nights and these girls just leading other girls into that being great examples um, being so prepared for tonight like uh, y'all are up to preach next week just so you know um, anyway give it up for the high school girls we have our leaders and we would be we would be shorting everyone of something if we did not have our counselors and leaders come tell what happened in their lives so briefly they're going to come up and they are going to speak uh, because God really moved in our lives as well. Um, we, you know, they, they have great testimony. We're missing Michaela tonight. She could not make it. Um, but this is not the, uh, <laughs> this is not the amount of people you necessarily would like to take. You would rather have a few more. But this whole group did a great job leading these students. And so I want to let them, Chandler, let, go ahead and start it off. Just kick it right up. Kick right. off the... Kick off the leader part. First thing I want to say is I do not understand how any of these people are saying that running was their favorite part. I don't get that. How in the world is running your favorite part of church camp? Running sucks. Anyways, so <laughs> back to it. So leading up to camp, like a lot of the students, I did not want to go at all. I had a long week leading up to it. We got packed, everything. I was on a bus. It was hot. I didn't want to be there. I was, I was sitting on the floor the whole way up. Like, I didn't, didn't want to go. But we got up there. I drugged myself through the first day, worked, did everything they needed me to. And then we got to that first, like, full day's evening service, so Monday's evening service. And, you know, I just kind of sat there. And spiritually, I kind of got stuck, I guess, stuck in the mud, spinning my wheels for a while. So getting into that, I was expecting God to do something for me because he, he had me there for a reason. And I was going to figure out what that reason was. So I got into that, and he kind of just did something to me throughout that whole entire first evening service. And I got to take the focus off of how much I didn't want to be there. And I started to focus on why I was there and watching all of the other students grow. And being able to do that just really helped me out personally in my spiritual life. And I know it helped out all of them as well. So... My name is Sebastian Kruger. I graduated from Comanche in 2020, so I didn't really get to have my senior uh, church camp. So that was, uh, I was kind of excited to go to this camp, and then I heard that if I go, I'm not, like, I, I, the camp is going to take me from the group and make me work, and I'm like, I wasn't really fully down for that. Uh, and I was like, if I'm going to have to work, I'd rather be working, you know, where I'm actually getting paid because I've got stuff I need to pay for. But uh, I ended Man, up going. adulthood is hard. Yeah, I ended up going, and I'm like, uh, 
first day is kind of, you know, stressful. We're late. Uh, Chandler and I, uh, Michaela, were called uh, RAs, so we're rec advisors, I believe. Is that what? I think that's what, something. Yeah, something like that. That's what they called us. We had a special meeting we're supposed to go to, and on our little schedule, it's a whole hour, so we're like really stressed out because we've missed a whole hour of this meeting, and we finally, we go up to talk to the guy, and literally all he had to say is, be here at, by 8, 10 in the morning. That's all we needed to do, know. So we're stressing out over nothing, really, uh, but then we go to the first night of service. Um, I'm still stressed out because we still don't fully know what's going on, but, you know, I've, we're going to figure it out. Uh, so first night service wasn't really, like, I, get, I wasn't really into it. But then come the second night service, um, during worship, I start kind of feeling something heavy on my heart. So I just start praying. And I open my eyes and look over at Chandler, and he's over here. He's having a God moment. And I'm like, yep, God's moving. So this is, this is uh, something great's going to happen. So I just remember praying, uh, God, overwhelm me. Give me more than I can handle tonight. And that's exactly what happened that night. Like, I was in tears. I'm not much of a crier at all. I'm in tears. Uh, I'm whatever. Uh, Manny was talking about the test. Uh, he said that uh, immature Christians wonder if they can trust God, but a mature Christian wonders if God can trust them. And so that's why God gives us these tests so that we can prove that we are, you know, he's able to trust us to do his work because it's not light work. It's a lot of hard, you know, difficult things that, you know, it's easy to mess up if you're not in the right place. You don't have the right mindset. And particularly that uh, last test that he was talking about, the test of the past, was the one that I was struggling the most with. Mainly, you know, some things that happened a while back, uh, just struggling to forgive. Uh, he said that unforgiveness kills everything that God has for you because, like, all these things that you have hold you down, and God's not going to just take those from you. You have to let God take those from you. He's you know, we have free will, so he's not just going to overpower us with our free will for, if we're not going to let it happen. And so uh, I finally kind of let that go, and I think that is, was, I say that's the second most important of my night, uh, second most important night in my life other than the night that I, you know, decided to follow Jesus, so. Hi everyone, my name is Kaylee, and as you may have heard, Sebastian did not mention my name when they said RAs. And when Tanner asked me to come to camp, I was like, yeah, I'll just come, I'll help out. And it wasn't until we got there that I found out that I was going to have a cabin full of middle school girls by myself. <laughs> Everyone else had a helper, and it was just me and 13 middle school girls. No, we didn't know that either, Kaylee. Tanner tells me he didn't know, but I, I don't know. I didn't know. Um, <laughs> but it was really fun. I got to be the counselor for a lot of the girls that I was also a kids camp counselor for many years before. And so that was really cool to see where, how much they had grown um, over the years. Um, uh, to start camp, Tanner actually left his pillow. And so that was my first assignment of camp was to yeah. go to Dunkin'. There was a lot of fetch, adversity going to camp. Tanner's pillow. My pillow forgot my pillow. Kaylee got the pillow job. Yeah. Thank you, Kaylee. You're the real, you're the real reason camp went well, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> Without my pillow, it might not have went fine. And go so, ahead. But as everyone said, Manny was an amazing speaker. We got to hear um, Manny speak along with everyone else, but we also got to hear him in some leadership sessions, and they were very informational. And I told my girls, um, you could literally sit in a room with him for five minutes and hear 20 things that you needed to hear. It was so amazing to just hear everything he had to say because it spoke to each and every one of us, even though we were all in different areas of life and going through different things. Like, it spoke to every single person there. Um, and so that's pretty much all I had to share. I was going to keep it short and sweet, but... To end the blob, um, they talked me into doing the blob. I was excited until I got in the air and I was no longer excited. Um, I thought I was tough and I'm not. I will probably not do it again, but. Well, first off, I was with these high school girls um, and 
they are minimizing how much they won. So I tried to think of them all. The Bible battle, high five football, Lord of the Rings, dodgeball, something castle, um, anything. There are several others, and I just can't remember them. They were winning so much that the other groups were becoming upset because we were that good. We were fine, but we were good. So I'm really proud of you guys. First off, you guys, I just want to start by saying thank you for any way that you have supported our group, whether it was through prayers, whether you have sponsored someone, and for being here tonight. I know that this may run longer. I'm not sure. This is maybe run a little bit longer, but they're sharing their testimony, and I thank you so much for being patient and, and listening to them because they truly had some breakthroughs, and this is so important for them. It's not easy for them to get up here and share everything that God kind of gave them, and so I'm very thankful for you guys sitting here and, and being a part of us and, and what we experienced. Um, mm, this camp, to describe it, was the most incredible fun games all day long. Very structured, very planned, and at night, the most amazing, intense uh, worship and messages. That, that pretty much sums up what camp was like. I think that we all can think back on messages that have made an impact in our life, whether it's come from, from our own pastor or through a conference. You can remember those messages. Um, and this group truly did receive a word from God, and it either gave them a breakthrough or it gave them insight. Um, I have thought a lot about why did we feel God's presence so much? Why did, you know, you heard everyone speak tonight. Why was it so strong um, of an experience for them? Um, and more, there's several things. First off, I will start by saying... Um, the bondage that cell phones are putting on our kids is mind-blowing. And so one of the first things we did is we put them in a safe, and we locked them up. They will deny that this is a, good, a big reason of why I felt like they had a breakthrough, um, but I, I believe that's one of the reasons. Um, yeah, and uh, it goes along with um, Pastor's message, I felt like this morning, about how do we receive those keys to the kingdom? And that was one of the ways right there. Um, we get away from things that distract us. We go expecting. You heard several of them talked about how they, well, we're here. We're expecting. They pressed in. Every message that we're given, they had this heart of, okay, what, what are you saying to me, God? Um, they were surrounded by positive influence. And they heard God's word. The great thing about all of that that I just described is you have that on a daily basis if you will create that for yourself. Come expecting. Get away from things that distract you. Surround yourself with positivity. Um, and the last thing I would say, the cabins were so cool. They were very, very, very nice. We're not used to them being so nice. And so they would house about 15 in each, each room, and our cabin housed four rooms. And so we occupied two of those rooms. Our goal... I don't know about you guys, but our girl goal is next year we would love to occupy the whole cabin. And so if you've got kids, if you have grandkids that were not a part, um, make them come. I don't know what they're all talking about. Like, they didn't want to come. Like, why? Did, they didn't have a choice. Like, get in the van. <laughs> get your kids to camp, guys. Get them there that way, God, that, that seeds can be planted and um, we're expecting great things. And like we said, we are setting the environment. We're setting the tone over in our youth building. And uh, we may even have to take over the sanctuary some Wednesdays because we're, we are growing so much and we're on fire. And so thank you guys so much for sharing these kids with us and supporting us. And um, thank you. Awesome. So my name's Matt, and I like high five football. No, <laughs> it's the only thing we want. <laughs> And we won Bible battle two to one, so that was cool. Yeah, they asked us 14 questions. Three whole questions, right. But that was my fault. We were supposed to do it over Philippians chapter 3, and I quizzed them over Ephesians chapter 3 the night before. If they would have asked us any questions over Ephesians 3, we would have known it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, hey, not to take anything away from Manny uh, Arango, dude could shuck the corn, no doubt. But one thing that deserves to be said is that what Christ responds to is obedience and sacrifice. <laughs> 
And, and the reality of all of these leaders coming and people giving and the sacrifice that was brought to get you guys to go to camp, family time that was given up and jobs and monies and all this stuff, I promise you that was a huge part of being able to receive the speaker. The worship that we had that cultivated the hearts for you guys, that opened what that means, that opened up your hearts to receive the seed or the word was just as important. Amen? And, and, the, and the question is, how do we continue on in that? Well, we come to church with the same expectation. Can I get an amen? Yeah, with the same appreciation that we had for Manny, the same appreciation that we had for the worship team. We have that same appreciation for our worship team on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesday. We, we, we come in with an expectation of, God, what are you going to say from the pulpit that could change my life today? What, what, what do you want to say? And, and there's so many things that I know as a youth you think, man, and, and that's true. He, he definitely was every bit. But as a leader, as I look back, I say, God, I know that you respond to obedience and sacrifice. Sacrifice, and, and, and I cannot appreciate our leaders and everyone who prayed and gave and whatever sacrifice it was that was a sacrifice for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because we really had some kids encounter Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Uh, for me, one of the great things that I think Cap was, of course, the Tower Wars and all that stuff was good. I was the camera guy. I'm not getting in the swamp pit or mud pit or whatever. I'm not doing that. I'm 38. I had plenty of time for that when I was younger. Plus, man, I'm going to break a hip or something now. You know, I don't want to go out there and slip. Good Lord. You know, I don't want any of that. And the blob was really, really fun. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Jillian was probably my favorite, and this is the reason why. Uh, Kaylee was probably my second favorite because she didn't know what was coming. Like, you know, she was kind of talked into it, but she was brave. Uh, sorry, Josh, but it was a lot of fun to launch Micah, too. It really was. But, but Jillian, because Jillian looks back. She's crawling across the blob. She looks back, and she goes, launch me, Matt. I'm thinking, I'm going to, dude. Because I was like, <laughs> you know, like WWF it, you know. <laughs> And it worked, dude. She went up there, and I had a blast. And uh, I told Pastor Mike, I sent him that video, and I said, aren't you so proud of your associate pastor? I'm teaching kids to soar. That's the reason why I went, and teaching them, teaching them to soar, and that's what we did. But, but all the fun and everything was great. But we're just so appreciative of all the sacrifice and everything that you guys gave and just cannot overstate the importance of our help. Amen? We love you guys. and proud of you, youth. I'm proud of you, proud of you, proud of you. So as most of them said, you know, uh, I'm on the side of I didn't want to go to camp. I'm just just to be clear, I was not wanting to go. This was a it was a hard week. AC went out the day before we go to camp. Um, th I have a two year old daughter. If you have a, if you've ever had a daughter, I feel like you the last thing you want to do is leave your daughter. I don't know if that's a, a, a actual thing or if I'm the only one, but you just don't want to leave your two year old daughter ever. And so I didn't want to go. And so. That seems like a 50-50 thing. But we got there. It was amazing. The night, too, was the confirmation for me that we had all done the right thing, that that was what we needed, that God was moving, that I saw the breakthrough in these students. It refreshed me. Manny uh, could just preach the paint off the walls. It was amazing. Um, every sentence he said was almost like, I can make a sermon out of that. I can make a sermon out of that. I will preach that one day. Like, it was awesome. And so it just really refreshed me. Um, both to, to kind of get that for myself, but just to see these students press into God, like Matt said. They, they really embraced God. There, we were late. There was adversity, uh, but they just really dived in and, and chose to follow God. And next year, like Micah said, Micah hit it right on the head. We want to fill cabins. Like, we want to have a full guy's cabin and a full girl's cabin. Um, that would be amazing, and it's possible. I, we told them as we were leaving, all it takes is you guys all come back and bring one more person. That's it. In one person with you, and that's all it takes. So it was a great week. Um, we want to do something special to close this out, then we'll close with prayer. We have um, something that we want to do. We are going to do, uh, Matt and I talked about this. We want to award the students who did, just had the camp spirit, the best camp spirit. Um, that served all week long, that showed the spirit of camp, that were excited, that were willing to pick up water bottles and sweep and mop and do all the things it took to keep us, like, living in a safe place for, like, two days, because it takes a lot, by the way. Like, like, pick up your clothes, please. They're sopping wet. Please put them outside, please. They're, 
please. Shoes and wetness. And again, everything was mud. Everything was mud. We had to mop so many times. So we wanted to award these students who really did that. So the first student we want to award is Reese Mittick. Reese, go ahead and come on up here. So Reese did not talk. Uh, stay up here, Reese. Don't go. Stay, stay in the spotlight right here. Spotlight. You're the, you're the main man right now. So Reese, uh, Reese the last night, Manny gives an altar call. Reese raises his hand. Um, Reese is like head and shoulders above everybody, right? Reese raises his hand. Manny comes up and prays for him. And uh, Reese just really had a breakthrough with God. Manny basically said some things, kind of prophesied some things over his life. I believe they're true. Reese is a leader. Reese is a man that's going after God. And Reese, is, uh, Reese was willing to be uh, just some little things. He was like telling junior high students, like, yeah, pick up your water bottles. This is nasty, guys. This is crazy. Pick them up. Pick them up. Get your stuff. Like, that's the camp spirit we needed. And Reese is in the video cheering for the red team, coming back home. Reese did everything right. Give it up for Reese one more time. And uh, the award for the girls, uh, that we are missing a key member for tonight's speaking because we are missing the winner of this award. She did a great job all week long. She, was, she, she is the spirit, the spirit, like the... Uh, the hype leader of the group, okay? So she's getting everybody pumped up. She's excited. We very much miss her tonight, but the reason she's not here is because her softball team made it to the championship, so she's dominating other places. So we're going to have her sister, Sienna, go ahead and come on up because Brighton O'Connor won the Camp Spirit Award for the girls. So we will tell Brighton that she missed out, but we appreciated everything Brighton did. Sienna, maybe. Sienna, you going to win it one day? You, you are? You're just going to follow in the footsteps. Take the mantle. Taking up the mantle. IMA conference. All right, give it up for Brighton and Sienna. So what we want to do to close this out um, is I want to, before, I'll call everybody up here to pray and these students and surround these students. Here's the reason why. We had, like, they talked. There was, we didn't all really want to go to camp. We, we had a lot of adversity. We were late. That was just Matt and I being rookies, not having any idea how long it took to take that people mover all the way to Sparks. You can't go 70 in that people mover. So we just were delayed. Um, we took, it took a long time getting there. The reason why is this. God moved in the life of every student. And like Micah said, youth is growing. These people, uh, these students and these leaders, they are the ones who help on Wednesday nights. And God moved. And the, the thing that, that I want everybody to catch is we came home Wednesday. And uh, before camp, I was thinking, why in the world are we coming back home from camp and still having service? Like, I wanted to take a nap. Like, I already had it in my mind. Like, let's just go home and nap. We, we don't have to have service. But we did. We brought it back home. And we said, we want to create the camp environment here at church. And so what we said is it, what it takes to do that is you have to come home and worship the same God that was at camp the same way at home. You, the same God at home. And so they bring it home, and that night everybody's excited, everybody comes in, and they worship God. And this is the part, this is the take home, I think, for me. is these students worship God, it's great. Uh, the, Micah picked the songs great. Uh, and what we saw was students that did not go to camp that usually are always, uh, you know, fidgety or talking or a little bit disruptive. Those students saw what was happening in the move of God that was brought home, and they worshiped God. We saw students raise their hands that had never raised their hands. We saw students sing songs that had never sang. We saw students just be still and pay attention to the words that had never done so ever. So it, it, a breakthrough is a breakthrough for someone. Just to have the maturity to stand still is a breakthrough for a sixth grader sometimes. And so these students brought that home. So what I want everybody to do is these students come up is I want them to come here and be the core and everybody surround them. And we want to pray that this move of God continues into this fall. Because we, as a youth group, um, I told them this the last night of camp, um, and I believe this, we as a youth group are going into a fall that we will have not ever been into. We, we are going into something that has not, like we are going to try to grow the group in a way that's not been grown. We are going to develop leaders in a way that hasn't happened before. We need prayer to do that, amen? So if you would, if you guys would surround these students. Because we want to lift them up in prayer. 
and we want to take twice as many students next year. We want the guys to win some more stuff. <laughs> we want the girls to be undefeated two times in a row. And uh, we want Matt to be able to launch somebody a little bit higher next time. <laughs> Perfect the Bob technique. Again, pray that these students continue this move of God. Realize that this is a, a something I, I didn't say. That when we get back home, Satan doesn't want the move of God to continue. Amen? The distractions return. The, the things return. School starts. Friends, drama, all these things will become a part of their lives again. And they have to figure out that God is still there the same way and still accessed by the same things, by worship and prayer. Amen? Let's pray for these students. God, we thank you. We thank you for every student who went to camp, God, those who are here and those who weren't here, Lord. We pray that you help us to continue what moved in our lives at camp, Lord God. We pray that your Holy Spirit fills them up. Lord God, help them to walk forward in faith. Help them to walk forward as believers. Lord God, that they go through the adversity they face this year, Lord God, with a passion for you. Lord Jesus, that they reach the people around them, that they reach out in their schools, God, that they are leaders among their schools. Lord, that they are able to go back, Lord God, and if they're in college, Lord, that they reach those around them and they step up in leadership. And Lord God, that if you've called some of them, you bring them into where their calling is, Lord. And Lord God, you help them to grow in you. Lord God, help us to have a fall, Lord God, that changes this county, Lord. Help us to walk forward as these students grow in leadership, Lord God, as some uh, church, Lord, that reaches this entire county, that reaches Duncan and Empire and Comanche, Lord God, and Velma and Marlowe, all the schools around us, Lord. We pray that these students, as they go home, Lord God, would be able to continue that work. God, we thank you so much. We thank you for all the support that you, Lord God, that was given, Lord. We thank you for everything that you gave us, God. We thank you helping us get through all that we've been through, Lord. And we look forward to the work of God that you are going to do in the lives of these students and others this fall. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Waylon and the band have a song, so if you would like, stay down here. We're going to worship a little bit. <laughs>